I'm coming. <sighs> oh, come on. Go. Crikey, you need a coal shoot to cope with this lunch. Out you come. Oh. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, that's torn it. Oh, who's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> morning, old boy. Oh, Tark, when you're up bright and early this morning. Oh, it's 9.48. Oh, I'm early for a Sunday, I mean. Oh, we've been up since 7. Oh, have you? Mm. Always attend early communion. Oh. Uh, yes, well, we normally go to the, uh, uh, to the 9.30 service. Oh, <laughs> not this Sunday. No, we're, uh, we're not dressed for it. So I see. Mm. Well, two reasons for my call, actually. First, we seem to have your Sundays by mistake, so presumably you've got ours. <laughs> uh, Sundays? Yes. yes. Uh, do you, do you ha normally have a lot of papers on a Sunday? Oh, uh, all the quality Sundays, naturally. Ah. Last week, in fact, we found it impossible to read them all. Ah. <laughs> You're not going to find it too easy this week, are you? <laughs> mm. Sorry? Uh, I mean, you can't find it easy to get them through your letterbox. Oh. The paper boy knows better than to try. If anything happens to my Sundays, I positively explode. Hmm, <laughs> I've heard reports. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, do you have them or don't you? Uh, bits of them. What? <laughs> they're, they're here. Ah. Oh! You, I'm, Get... I'm, oh! I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, and you can tear up ours if you like. Oh, on earth. Oh, hello, Tark. Yeah. I mean, look at this, June. That's what comes of forcing them through your letterbox. Oh, that is annoying. Mm. Hang on a minute, though. Oh, it's all right. You needn't worry about it, Tarquin. Why not? They're not our papers. <laughs> well, I know they're not. I mean, those are your papers there. Are they torn? No, they're fine. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Mm. But it isn't all right. Mm. I mean, those are my papers. Oh, dear. How did you get them in that state? Well, <laughs> you see, I did it pulling them out of our letterbox. Which is too darn narrow for my papers. I quite agree, Tarquin. Mm. But why did you put them through our letterbox in the first place? Well, it is quite never simple, mind, June. Never mind, never mind. You can explain after I've gone. I really came in to ask if you were going to church this morning because the vicar wanted to have a word with you. Oh, Austin, why? Well, there's an old folks' club held in the church hall during the week where they play bingo, dominoes and that sort of thing. Melinda and I be going along there for the last three Thursdays. Well, I suppose it keeps you off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> we go to give little chats to the old folk. Oh, how nice. Yes, well, we thought perhaps a fourth week might be too much of a good thing. So we were looking around for someone who might take our place this Thursday and the vicar came up with you. What would we talk about? Oh, anything you like. This week, Melinda was planning to talk about macrame. Uh, we don't know much about Italian food. I mean, pasta goes straight to my waistline. <laughs> it's the art of nutting. Pardon? Well, you make things with it. I mean, potholders, bags, that sort of thing. We usually have cheese with ours, don't we? <laughs> yes, well, look, just think about it. Oh, by the way, would it be a good idea if we all popped in around four o'clock this afternoon for a quick chat? Mm. I mean, you will be dressed by then, won't you? Well, of course I will. Oh, and talking about old clothes. Thank you very much. If you've got anything you've finished with, the old folk are holding a jumble sale at the end of the week. We'll be glad to look out some things for them. Good. And on the subject of rags, I'd better get this lot back to Melinda. Oh, Tarquin, why don't you take our papers? Well, what would I want your papers for? Uh, to read? Yes. To read? Oh, no, thank you, June, dear. See you round four. <laughs> oh, he can be such a snob sometimes. If his nose gets any higher, he'll have to take his hat off to blow it. <laughs> Did they have our Sundays? More or less, yes. Oh, good. Uh, did they agree to take our place? Oh, I think they can be persuaded, yes. Good. Did you tell them about the bingo swindle? Oh, we don't know it is a swindle. <laughs> it's all so sordid. Well, that's why I think we'd better stay out of it. Let the vicar bring it up this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> did they do that? I'm afraid so. Have they bought a dog? <laughs> Who needs a dog with Terry round the place? <laughs> Oh, well done. And this old coat of yours you never use anymore. Mm. That and the rest of this stuff should be enough for the jumble. Yeah, well, the vicar can take it all when he calls. Oh, no, Terry. Mm. I want to get these clothes dry cleaned first. Dry cleaned? How much is that going to cost? Mm. Seven or eight pounds. 
Seven or eight quid? Uh, maybe ten's nearer the mark. Well, you won't get ten pounds for them at the jumble. Oh, nevertheless, I'd feel better if they were cleaned first. Well, why not just give them the ten quid, then we'll all feel better. I mean, you, you won't have to have them dry clean and they won't have the bother of flogging them. You can't just give them ten pounds, Terry. Old people don't like accepting charity. All right, well, give them the clothes as they are and I'll buy them back for ten pounds. You're not paying ten pounds for this lot. They're not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you having them dry clean for? Well, you can't expect people to buy dirty clothes. Well, I will. I've just said I will. Oh, all right, then. But ten pounds is still too much. Let's say five. Five? All right. Five pounds. Five pounds. Down. Down. Oh, thank you, darling. That's very generous of you. Yeah, you can give it to the vicar when he calls. <clears throat> oh, no, I can't. Why? Well, Why this is going towards the cost of the dry cleaning. <laughs> But I thought I just bought them. Well, yes, you did, darling. But you don't really want them, do you? No, no, of course not. Well, that's settled then. <laughs> uh, wait, wait a minute, wait... By the way, had any more thoughts on what to talk about to the old folk? Yeah, how to make a fortune in the old clothes business. <laughs> what? Mm. Oh, shall I go? Yeah, you better go before it costs me any more money. I don't know how she does it. Every time I try to get her to economise it, it costs me money. Uh, Terry's in the living room. Oh, thank you. Oh, hello, Terry. Oh, Austin. Uh, sorry we weren't at church this morning, but uh, busy week. We've had trouble with the workforce. Oh, uh, no apology necessary, Terry. Even the good Lord himself rested on the seventh day. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't have trouble with the unions, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Do come on in and sit yourselves down. Uh. Yes. Austin, these are some of the things that we've got out for the jumble sale. Oh, that tea maker looks brand new. Perhaps it ought to be first prize in the raffle. Oh, no, no, Austin. We're giving the first prize for that. Oh, what are you giving them? One of our Mexican statuettes. An Olmec fertility totem. A fertility totem? Yes. <laughs> and you're giving it away? Yes. Didn't it work, then? <laughs> Weren't you going to offer us a drink? Oh, yes, I'll talk with Last time you were here, you asked for ouzo or tequila. Oh, yes, and you hadn't got them and tried to give us furniture polish instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was an honest mistake, Tarquin. <laughs> but having tasted ouzo and tequila since, I wonder you can tell the difference. However, I have been stocking up on exotic booze, especially for your visit, and I can now offer you ouzo, tequila, bourbon, mead, absinthe, sake, kirsch, retzina, coconut wine, paliopani, southern comfort, Servits and schnapps. <laughs> you name it, we've got it. <laughs> Dry sherry, please. <laughs> Dry sherry. You, you did say dry sherry, didn't you? Please. I've got some very nice sweet sherry here. Dry if you've got it. Well, of course we have got everything. Ouzo, tequila, bourbon. But Terry. Kirsch, Pagliacci, everything. Terry, there's a bottle right at the back. Oh, thank you. Not for that. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And Tarquin? Uh, ditto for me, please. Ditto? <laughs> I don't think... I don't think we got any of that. We've, uh... We've got some dettle in the kitchen, if you like. I think you'll be happy with a dry sherry. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Austin, anything for you? Uh, no, thank you. I, I've had quite enough already. Melinda's lunch was delicious, but a little hot. Oh, was it, um, was it one of your Mexican specialities, Melinda? Pujero! Well, I only asked. <laughs> Pujero, spiced casserole with sweet corn. Garnished with prunes hasta la vista. Mm. Prunes? Are they the ones you gave us, stuffed with green peppers? Oh, how clever of you to remember. <laughs> Hard to forget. Mm. <laughs> As I remember, it was rather an explosive combination. <laughs> the Mexicans have always done very interesting things with prunes. <laughs> they certainly did some very interesting things to me. <laughs> uh, did you, uh, did you, uh, did you enjoy them, Vicar? Mm, very much. I had a second helping. <laughs> Are you taking uh, this evening's service? Yes. I should make it a short sermon if I were you. <laughs> Now, shall we get down to business? Yes, by all means. First of all, are you prepared to deputise for us next Thursday? We'll be glad to. Yes, yes, I've got this speech I made to the trainee salesman about the history of fire extinguishers. I've got the notes and the slides back in the office. Oh, I'm sure that'll be ideal for the old folk. Safety of the home is very important for them. 
Secondly, I don't quite know where to start. Melinda. I know it is a very delicate thing. Well, Vicar, perhaps you would like to... Uh, it's not a question of like, Melinda. It's a question of need. It needs to be brought out. Oh, I couldn't agree more. However unpleasant the consequences. Absolutely. Mm. Quite. Are we, are we still talking about the prunes? <laughs> I'm not sure. What exactly is the problem? Have you met the club president, Mrs Sibley? Not that I know of. Oh, you know if you had. She's mad as a hatter. I think she drinks. Oh, please, let's be charitable. She's an old woman, and at times her thinking is a little woolly. Nothing woolly about the way she rigged the bingo. She what? Rigged the bingo? We saw her do it. At least you think you saw her do it. You see, the club gives away two prizes of five pounds each week. But uh, we're rather afraid that Mrs. Sibley picks the winners beforehand and shares the money with them. A respectable woman like that? Oh, surely you can't imagine that she's guilty of, well, you know, fiddling. Well, why not? You just done me out of a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> All I ask is, if she invites you to participate in the bingo, take careful note of how she conducts the game. Ah, don't worry, Vicar. If the bingo is bent, we'll straighten it out. <laughs> I still don't like the idea of spying on an old woman. Well, neither do I, but if she's rigging the game, remember, she's cheating all those other old folk who have no chance of winning. Hello? Hello? Anyone here? Yes. Oh, Mrs Sibley? Yes. <laughs> yes. We've come to talk to your members. Have you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, we have. Ah. <laughs> you, um, you were expecting us? No. No? No. no. <laughs> we're here instead of the surprise. What surprise? <laughs> no, not surprise. Tarquin and Melinda spry. Who are? The, the people who are not coming. What about them? They're the surprise. <laughs> I thought there wasn't any surprise. <laughs> no, no. Yes, yes, Terry, there is a surprise. And the surprise is, Mrs Sibley, that we're here to talk to your club this week instead of the people who came last week. Oh, how very kind. I'll just get rid of this and I'll be right with you. <laughs> well, if she's a criminal mastermind, I'm the brain of Britain. <laughs> Rigging the bingo. Rigging the bingo? I'd be amazed if she knows how to play it. <laughs> now then, what did you say your name was? Mm. Terry and June Medford. And you're here instead of who? Tarquin and Melinda Spry. So that was their name. You, you, you mean you didn't know? Well, they did tell me the first week, but I didn't quite catch it. And I hadn't the nerve to ask again. Mm. I always referred to them as the dear friends who need no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> they may be along later. Mm. Who will? The Spry's. Another surprise! <laughs> No, 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 Mrs. Sibley. Tarquin and Melinda may be along later to give you a, a contribution to your raffle. Oh, how very kind. <laughs> yes, and uh, we've brought one or two things along as well. Some clothes and a brand new tea maker. Oh, that's very nice. Yes, I bought a couple of old suits and some paperbacks. I've always wanted one of these. Hello. Has it got instructions? <laughs> yes, in the box somewhere. Watch her, she'll be off with it. Shh. I, I think I, I think I'd better lock this in the hall cupboard mm. for safety. Yeah. <laughs> the last we'll see of that. Mrs. Sibley, about the tea maker. Yes. It's for your raffle on Saturday. Well, of course it is. But I'm always very lucky in our raffles. <laughs> I bet she rigs them like the bingo. I thought you said she wasn't capable. That was before I saw the gannet-like gleam in her eye. Oh, you noticed she didn't bother to lock these clothes away for safety. Well, probably because she doesn't think they're valuable. Probably because she doesn't think they'll fit her. Now then, is there anything you'll be needing for your little talk? Well, a projector and screen, but the vicar's arranging that. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> yes, um, Terry did give him the slides yesterday. Beautifully warm. Mm. You're not giving me 
this away, are you? For your clothes stall, yes. Well, if I were to turn the sleeves up, it would fit beautifully. <laughs> yes, but you'll have the chance to buy it on Saturday with all the other people, won't you? Saturday? Uh, yes, that's when you're having your jumble, isn't it? Jumble? Yeah. Yes, I, I think I better lock this up in the hall cupboard. Mm. For safety. For safety, yes. Yeah. I say, you don't think you want to go through those old books in case you want to lock them away? For safety? For safety, yes. I don't think so. I'm not a great reader. There we are. She's as good as admitted she's putting them away for herself. Oh, no, she isn't. She's just, you know, locking them away. For safety. For safety, yeah. I thought I heard your voices. Austin. <coughs> I got the projector loaded, the screen all set up. Vicar, I want to introduce you to our new friends, the Sprys. Oh, no, Mrs. Sibley, they're not the Sprys. Oh, yes, I know. I made that mistake. Spry is their name. No, no, Mrs. Sibley. This is Terry and June Medford. I did tell you about them. Oh, yes, I know. Such a shame they can't come. No, 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 Mrs. Sibley. No, don't, don't worry, Vicar. At least we know who we are, don't we, Melinda? <laughs> well, it's, it's time I introduce you to our members. Come along. It should be interesting. Uh, before you go in, I think I should warn you. It's not quite the turnout we'd hoped for. Uh, as long as there's somebody there. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> Just. And instead of our dear friends with lovely Mexican pots, we have some new friends. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here they are. So let's give a warm welcome to, oh dear, the, uh, our new friends. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Um, don't you think we should possibly wait for the other people to turn up? There are others coming. Oh, yes, indeed. Ah. But it won't be here until it's time for the Bingo and Dominoes tournament. So, this is it? Yes, but we're a terribly enthusiastic audience. <laughs> so I'll hear. Did our friends get a bigger audience? At first, yes, but it dwindled. Well, now we know why they were so keen to get someone else to do it. The rotters. Good luck, darling. Uh. <coughs> uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking today about the history and development of fire extinguishers. From the earliest days... Have you begun? <laughs> Sorry? Have you begun? Yes, yes, I've begun. Just so long as I know. <laughs> Um, from, from the earliest days... Uh, sorry, Terry, but uh, while you've stopped, uh, do you want the lights out for the slides? Uh, if you wouldn't mind, Austin. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh, uh, before I do, I, I'd just like to remind everyone to be wary of the projector flex. <laughs> I've already fallen over it once, so do uh, please be careful. <laughs> um, on you go, Terry. Uh, right. From earliest days, fire has been... Fire has been... From the earliest days, fire... <laughs> I've, I'm sorry, I'll have to have the light back on. I can't see... The, uh, you read the story. Oh, I'll do it, June. C can I have the lights back on, please? Yes, I'm on my... Oh! <laughs> Austin, are you all right? Oh, oh, not to worry. Not to worry. But I would like to repeat my warning about the projector flex. It's only too easy to trip over it, as I have done. Twice. Can we have the first slide? Oh, can you manage that, June? Oh, yes, of course. But you won't be able to see it if the lights are on. Well, I won't be able to read the script if they're off. Well, shall I stay here and turn them on and off? Good idea, Austin. Uh, from earliest days, fire has been man's servant and his destructive foe. Austin, lights! Roger! June, first slide, please. <laughs> June, first slide. Nothing's happening. Oh, dear. I, I must have pulled out the plug when I tripped over it. Austin, lights! Oh, uh, Roger! <laughs> <laughs> Anything. We're having a terribly interesting talk from our new friend here, all about fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers? Yes. <laughs> oh, dear, not your cup of tea, perhaps, but see you later. Not staying either, Mrs. Edgerly. I can't do my knitting with the light on an off like that. Yes, I know it is a nuisance, isn't it? But it won't be for long. Dear Mrs. Edgerly, I'm dedicated knitter. Uh, do you want the lights off, Terry? <laughs> Oh, don't say that. We're all enjoying 
enjoying it enormously. Well, all you're the only one here that can, that can hear me and stays awake. Go on, lights. <laughs> Roger. We begin with the cavemen. June, June, first slide. Australian cavemen. Oh, sorry, Terry. Oh, dear. I think I must have loaded them all like that. This may take a little time. <laughs> oh, good. What? It'll just give me time to put the urn on for interval tea. Uh, have you done? Sorry? Have you done your little talk? Have you done? For the moment, yes. Oh, that's how I like them. Short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That was a complete and utter waste of time. I enjoyed it. And you've got one fan at least. Oh, yeah. Who? Have you done? <laughs> <laughs> she thinks you're a film star. Oh, does she really? Yes. After your talk, she came up to me and said, Doesn't your husband look like Charles Lawton? <laughs> <laughs> Charles Lawton, yes, sir. That does make me feel a great deal better. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost ready to begin. Right, OK. <laughs> Look, you do the calling and I'll do the snooping. Right. What about Austin? Oh, he's keeping an eye on things from backstage. Oh, I've given you the wrong card, Mr. Tiger. This is the one you're meant to have. Does it matter? Most decidedly. <laughs> all this spying, and for all we know, she's innocent. It's like taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Mm -hmm. Yoo-hoo! Nut is right. Now, if you're all sitting down comfortably, we'll begin. Uh, here we are. The numbers are all in this little bag. Just give it a little shake and pull one out. Right. And the first number... Ice is... down for a full house! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, my dear, to go on. Uh, the first number is ten. No, it'll have to be a little bit louder, I'm afraid. Oh, sorry. Ten. Still a little soft. Ten. What was it? Ten! <laughs> a big fat hen. Quite <laughs> right, Mrs. Edgerley. Would you mind awfully saying that? Uh, saying what? A big fat hen. It's all part of the jargon and they do so love it to sound right. Yes, of course. Uh, a big fat hen. No, oh, no. no, no. My dear, you, 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 you yes, haven't I quite got it yet. yet. A big fat hen, number ten. That's it, Mrs. Barker. Uh, have you got it now? Yes, I think so. A big fat hen, number ten. <laughs> I've solved it. Huh? I found these backstage under Mrs. Sibley's coat. What are they? The rest of the bingo numbers. What? She only puts certain numbers in the bingo bag. So, of course, June can't help picking the numbers on her Confederate's cards. Oh, crafty old baggage. <laughs> of course, I shall have to stop the game now. Oh, they won't like that. A mob of old folk can turn pretty ugly if you interrupt their bingo and they'll stone you to death with mince imperials. You can't do that. <laughs> it's one of those times when a vicar's got to do what a vicar's got to do. Mm. Doctor's orders number nine. I'm afraid I must interrupt for a moment. Oh, dear, you're not going to warn us about tripping over the flex again, are you? It is you who have tripped up, Mrs. Siddle. What's that? The remaining bingo numbers. You've been playing with a rigged bag. They, 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 they were lost. Well, now they are found. Yeah, and verily, verily, there is more joy over one number that returneth to the bag. Well, <laughs> so, Mrs. Sibley, what have you to say for yourself? Satisfied, you big bullies. That isn't fair, June. Here. That's right. Leave us all in the bag. What's the hold up? I've been sitting here waiting on two numbers. I'm yes. waiting on one. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, well, we better, oh, oh, better start the game because I have a riot here. After you, Vicar. Shh. <laughs> uh, key to the door. 21. Uh, it's a four. What do I say? Well, make up something appropriate. Um, Fact and fruity number four. <laughs> All the fives, 55. Parsons' pleasure, sweet 16. <laughs> now, I'm sorry, Vicar. I, I think we've been too soft for the old girl. I mean, June's been in there for the last two hours, making her tea and listening to her life story. She's an old woman, Terry. And we'll all be her age if we wait for June to get a confession out of her. 
Well, I'm sorry. In my opinion, we should now use the hard-nosed approach. Oh! <laughs> Funny, darling! Uh, what do you do? Does she admit rigging the bingo? Sort of, yes. That last. And if you've any sense, Austin, you'll let her go on doing it. I can't do that. I mean, if she was suffering hardship, I might turn a blind eye. But I happen to know that she's very well off. I know she is. That's how she can afford the £10 prize money each week. You mean she, she gets out of her own pocket? Yes, it's her way of giving the old folk an extra fiver every so often. They're too proud to accept charity, mm -hmm. and so the only way to make sure everyone wins something... Is to rig the game. Bingo. <laughs> am, am I forgiven? There's nothing to forgive. But you really mustn't be so generous with your money. But I have so much more than I really need. Especially since I gave up booze and fags. <laughs> <laughs> Good, you're still here. Oh, Melinda. We just bought in a few <coughs> things for Saturday. And that is our contribution to the raffle. Here we are. Handsome little devil, isn't he? Is there anywhere we can lock it all up? For, for safety? safety? Yes. There's a cupboard in the hall, through here. Uh, there we are. What exactly is that supposed to be? Oh, it's a fertility totem. Oh, yes. That'll come in very handy. <laughs> so, Tarquin, that little chap, does he, does he really improve your floor, you know? <laughs> of course not. But every peon has one in his home to ensure a plentiful harvest. Tarquin! Oh, just coming. By the flare! Oh, 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 well, well oh, oh, Terry! Oh, 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 no! Bangos next year's harvest. <laughs> <laughs>